Okay, we are recording. I do have a couple of things that we're going to be sharing. I have a PowerPoint and I have the video. Okay, okay. So, and, and, and Angela will uh, tell you when to very good. put those yeah. two up. Yeah. It's a uh, very good video. Yeah, we were happy with it. Yeah, really nice right. video. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and get started because I want to you know, definitely be conscious of uh, other people's time. Uh, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Arthur Lucas. I am serving as one of the co-chairs for this year's uh, United Way campaign, and I am out of the CAO's office. And also serving as co-chair this year will be Stacy Diamond, uh, who is over the uh, public information office. Uh, so throughout the campaign, if you all have questions or need information, uh, then you can, you know, more than welcome to call or email either Stacy or myself. Uh, in a moment or two, uh, I will turn everything over to Angela Crow from the United of the Bluegrass. Uh, she's going to take us through a PowerPoint presentation and talk a little bit about the campaign and uh, some of the forms uh, that we assist uh, people with their campaigns this year. Uh, uh, many of you already know uh, Chris Edwards. I want to thank Chris for assisting us today. Uh, Chris is actually off work but and in Michigan, but he uh, did uh, agree to help us out this morning. So, Chris, I do appreciate you being on with us this morning as well. Uh, most of you probably already know that the campaign will run from October the 14th through November the 14th uh, this year. Uh, last year was the first time I was involved and we, you know, had it go on for about a month and we're going to duplicate that time frame and just have the uh, campaign going on for a month. Uh, we do have our meeting scheduled for one hour today and we will be mindful of other people's time and with time so we will try to end within the one hour uh, versus, uh, you know, lingering on. Uh, but as I've already uh, said, for those that are just joining us, if anyone has any questions after today's meeting, please feel free to reach out to myself, serving as a co-chair, as well as uh, Stacy Diamond. And at this point in time, I guess I will go ahead and turn it over to Angela, and uh, Stacy will have a few things to uh, speak about towards the end of the uh, presentation today. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Arthur. I appreciate um, the intro and for your all's help. Um, and Chris, I so much appreciate you taking time being out of town and everything to run this for us. So um, Stacy and Arthur, I, I want to echo that we appreciate you and everyone that's on this call helping us out with the campaign. We're grateful for your help and we couldn't do this type of um, large campaign without without your help. So I just wanted to make sure you knew, we appreciate you. Um, you can start the slides. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about um, United Way and our impact um, in the community. You can um, go to the second slide. Yeah, so this just gives you some more um, information on uh, the contact information if you need to reach out to any of us and what their role is. Um, next slide. So the United Way and um, LFUCG campaign mission is to conduct a com company-wide employee fundraising campaign to solicit donations to support United Way the Bluegrass in our community. So this is just an overview of what we did in um, the community last year. We do serve 10 counties. Um, some of the things listed on here are Sweet Dreams Project, which every year we do this event for the last several years. Um, and um, towards the end of the year, around early December, we had some volunteer opportunities to sort pajamas and, and pack them into a nice little gift bag and we give those to kids in the region. Um, last year we supported over 2000 and those bags go home over their holiday break um, 
and it also includes like snacks and things for them while they're while they're over the break but it gives them a new pair of pajamas and a book to read um so that's continuing this year um if you look at some of those other numbers i'm going to highlight a couple of things um first of all we served almost 100 over 110,000 people in our region last year and that is in 10 counties in three waypoint centers which you'll hear me talk about in a minute and 67 partner agencies. Um, 211, which you probably are, most of you are already familiar with, it's been around for a long time. It's an information and referral contact center where people can call, actually just dial 211. It's similar to your 311. Um, so you can dial that from anywhere, any phone, and they serve our 10 counties, but also like the whole state of Kentucky. Um, so last year, they received almost 21,000 calls for help. And I wanted to highlight a little something about 211 that I think it's interesting that may, you all may find interesting as well. There's a website called 211 Counts. And if you're interested in what the top needs are from those calls or uh, the zip codes where those calls are made from um, in our service area, you can go to that website, um, 211counts.org. and you can filter it by United Way the Bluegrass and then narrow it even down to zip code or county. Um, I went in there this morning and pulled just a couple of numbers to share with you for Fayette County. Um, for all zip codes in Fayette County that we serve. Mm -hmm. And I selected January 1 through today just to give you an idea. Um, they may have received almost 18,000 calls, um, over 18,000 requests. And the top three needs were housing and shelter, utilities, and food. And that breakdown, uh, the housing and shelter was 37,000, or 37%, I'm sorry. And utilities was a little over 25%, and food was almost 9%. So it's just some great information of how um, the needs, you know, what the needs are. Um, but along the lines of the 211 Center, if you think about, a physical brick and mortar location, that's kind of the same concept of our waypoint centers. And so we opened three centers um, last year. You can flip to the next slide. So this is actually our ribbon cutting for um, one, in, <clears throat> excuse me. We had a couple open up in Fayette County and one in Bourbon County. And what that is, is it's, it's in the underserved neighborhoods so that transportation is hopefully not an issue to get people there. People can walk to them um, for the most part because that's the usually the population that where they're most needed. So we have one on the west end and one on the east end um, in Fayette County. One is in the Black and Williams Center across from BCTC and the other one is in the Charles Young Center. And both of them have, we've had great success stories already coming out of those. Um, and then we had the one in, in Paris as well. But I just wanted to highlight um, these centers have had just a number of successes where people can come in thinking they only need one thing. And by the time that our director does an assessment and asks questions, they walk away from there with one visit with so many things that they didn't even maybe didn't know they needed help with or didn't know that we could help them with, let's put it that way, in one location. So we have all of the partner agencies on the backside. They may deal with one or two people in a seamless kind of interaction to where our people help them connect to what they need make calls for them, make appointments for them. They're not running all over town. They're not sitting on hold trying to figure this out on their own. They are guided and helped through the whole process and can walk away with multiple things. They can get an interview really quickly, get a job, um, help with housing, help with furniture. There's just so many things. Um, and we have all those services in what we call the Waypoint Center. It really just creates an access point for the person on their journey as a stopover um, kind of way to think about it. Um, so I think at this time, we'll go ahead and show the video.
heard about Wake, Wake Point sent through uh, a church member of mine, a church member of mine. Uh, she gave me the flyer, told me to call Jerry Botts. I called Jerry and I uh, told her my situation, what I, what I was going through, and she told me to gave me an appointment, told me to come in and talk to her. Well, actually, I didn't know what, what I was going into in the beginning. But after talking to Jerry, uh, I was relaxed and uh, everything came together. I told Jerry that um, I needed insurance. I was homeless, didn't have a job. That was the number one thing, getting a job, uh, getting housing and insurance. Um, and it went from there. Because of what I was go going through, the question was, was di direct to the point, like waypoint. I'm a carpenter by trade. I always like to work with my hands. Um, going through this program, I was introduced to William Baker through Owl Academy. A lot going into that because I had to do a lot of paperwork. Uh, I had to, uh, a lot of testing. I didn't have the confidence uh, at, at first. By called uh, Jerry, she gave me the confidence to. Uh, to do this, and I got through it, and uh, I've been accepted. I'm gonna get paid for it, doing something that I love to do in anyway. I think my life is gonna be better. I've worked with people that's done the same thing that, that, that I'm doing now, uh, but making more, more money, but now, I can get that certificate, and I can make that money too, as well. I've already re recommended several people, my friends that don't have a job, or don't have insurance, um, don't have food, get help with the food stamp program, help with the insurance, uh, and jobs. I would highly, like I said, I, I would hi highly recommend recommend Waypoint to anybody. Thank you, Chris. Um, we'll go back to the slides. Um, as you can see, that was just one person's experience at Waypoint. And um, we just are so grateful that opportunity to to be able to serve the community in this way and we can't do that without your help and I think this is a great video that if you all had the opportunity and wanted to share a video um, with your folks that you have that available to you um, also I'll mention that 211 makes um, appointments for free tax preparation but this year this past year we were able to have those sites directly at the Waypoint Center. And so they did a lot of free tax preparation in those communities as well. Um, we do have those set up in all of our counties or most of our counties. And, but the Waypoint Center did, saw a lot of that traffic this year and brought in, um, as far as recovering tax dollars, about 3 million last year. So that's a huge thing and they work, side by side with 211 to get those appointments made and get people into the centers to get those done. Um, so we have great news. The um, COVID-19 restrictions have been lifted um, this year. So we can go back to in-person events, which is exciting. Um, at least I hope that you all think it's exciting too. I know a lot of your departments um, used to have um, a lot of these events, some chili cook-offs. I've been to some of them and some of your um, fall cookouts. So I, I know like Parks and Rec had several um, events or outdoor things and 
So that's available to you again this year. There's no restrictions on in-person, even if you would like a speaker to come in to your department or you wanna do some type of special group kickoff or presentation, um, you can just let me know that and, or Stacy and Arthur one, and they can reach out to me. However, that works um, for you all the best. Um, hopefully that will drive up some participation this year in some of your departments and get people excited. So there's a lot of different um, events that we can suggest. If you don't know what you want to do, they, I have a list I can share with you later if, if you wanted to do that. The next slide, please. The auction is going to be available again this year. I know I think that was pretty popular in the past. So um, if you have silent auction items or you want your department to participate in a silent auction, um, we will try to get that set up um, through Jen Goble at my office. You, it's pretty easy that this walks you through the steps, but she pretty much does all the work. You just have to send her like the descriptions and the pictures. And I think she puts, gets the site ready and sends you back out the link and monitors it. So um, that is an option again. We will go to the next slide. So I just wanted to go over a little bit about your responsibilities as a coordinator for the campaign. Um, a lot of you probably are returning and I appreciate that, but just in case there are some new folks, we will just go skim through this a little bit. Um, you are a liaison that will serve in your area and relay important communication um, and be the point of contact if anyone has questions or, um, and you will collect donations. You can also recruit people in your department to help you if you need it. Um, you will market it and send out communications about events. If there's gonna be activities or kickoffs that you will send um, information out about that. And then you will collect the pledge forms um, and the money if there are any from special events or anything like that. And you will put them in workplace envelopes by department and you'll fill out the face of the envelope and enter office them to Stacy at PIO. Um, you can also send thank you notes or treats um, if people participate. If you want, um, you can do follow-up reminders. So those are just some things that fall under your responsibilities. And again, we appreciate you. The next slide, we'll talk a little bit about some materials that's available to you. I mentioned the video is already. There are other videos as well that you can check out um, the link I believe is a live link in this presentation. Um, if you afterwards can want to go to our campaign tools on our website, there are many resources. Here, I'm just highlighting one of them um, because I think a lot of times this is a valuable information to pass along for people to show how much the impact really makes for a small amount. And when you have departments, uh, organization with as many people as you all do, it adds up and it makes a big impact. So even a small amount can make a big impact. If you can talk, you know, talk to people about what $2 will do, that could be a good resource in some of your departments. We have posters available. We have infographics, um, other presentation materials, county specific data sheets and PowerPoint presentations about the campaign. Um, and I think on the reverse side of this particular document has the path of a dollar. So sometimes people want to know how that works when I give my dollar work, what happens to it. So that's interesting information as well. And it will also be available on your all's LexLink intranet site. So all the materials have been uploaded there to where you can access them on location for your, um, for your needs. Next slide. I just want to congratulate you all for last year. You did a great job. You raised over $30,000 for the campaign in 29 departments. And that was a $7,800 increase over 2020. So I think I can only see great things happening from here. I think coming back from um, the, some of the restrictions that we've had, 
that hopefully we can see some more increases this year with special events and participation in some of those areas. So thank you so much for, for that. I just want to congratulate you and, um, and thank you again for that. The next slide, this just gives you, remind you your important dates. He, uh, Arthur's already mentioned that it runs from October 14th to November 14th. Um, I just wanted to show, remind you that payroll deductions are from January 1 to December 31 in case someone asks. So what they're pledging now won't come out until January if they do payroll deduction. Um, and payroll deduction from the previous year will not automatically roll over. Some people think that but you must re-enroll this year to continue the donation. Ways to donate, um, besides payroll deduction, you can do cash, change, check, um, turn in a paper pledge form with each donation. Um, that's important. We also need like the department that you are with written on the pledge form. Um, the credit cards are given on our website uh, that's listed there. And we also have a text to give again this year that we um, started last year. So that LFUCG gives to 91999. People can do that on their phone. Um, that would do the same thing, but we just ask that the employer field um, asks for division and that you instruct them to write that in there so that we can count it for your department. Um, and then money raised at events can be enclosed in a special event envelope and placed inside the workplace envelope or paid online through the above link for UWBG slash give. Um, workplace envelope, I just wanna go over that a little bit. You can submit a paper pledge form with all donations, cash check, credit card, text to give and payroll deductions. Any cash and checks for special events should be included in the amount on the workplace envelope under special events and checks should be made to United Way the Bluegrass. Um, coordinators can complete an envelope with the department name and totals and also submit those to Stacy. Um, this is an example of our pledge form this year. It hasn't changed a whole lot since from last year. Um, the biggest thing probably is the QR code is not there. Um, we didn't see a huge amount of people using that and that was really introduced during COVID. So that's not on there this year, but it's basically otherwise um, the same information. We've tried to make it as simple as possible. So people's not having to fill out a, a lot of information, but you know, just the vital information to help us direct it to the right person and, um, just reiterate that all donations and, and made out to United Way the Blue Guys put in the envelope and completed pledge forms go to each department and then the coordinators can pass them on to Stacy. Um, but right, it'll have a box there for your total gift amount. Um, and there's also a place to put the pay periods um, to fill those out. That That's important if if someone just writes in, sometimes we get them and and there's just an amount per week and we don't know the, the number of payroll periods sometimes. So either that or write out the actual total annual gift amount so that it's clear. And we do um, allow for everyone who, we'll switch to the next slide, I'm sorry. Everyone who donates to the campaign, it doesn't matter what amount. Um, if you provide us with a home address, we will send you in partnership with the Lexington Legends. Um, you will get two a voucher for two box seats to a 2023 home game. So the Legends have done this for us for um, quite a while and it's been pretty successful. I think people enjoy it and it's nice for us to be able to to do that for our donors. And so we appreciate the legends for doing that. If you get questions about designations, this is our list of our partner agencies that um, people can designate to um, currently. This, there, I think the wording on this, I might should have checked over that again. I wanna clarify a little bit about why that says $50 is required. You don't 
you're not required to give $50 designation, but if anybody wants to do a designation, there's a minimum of $50. So you can't go under $50 for us to be able to process that. Otherwise, it's just, we're gonna put it to our community impact fund. But if anybody is, wants to donate $50 or more of their pledge to an agency, that's perfectly fine. We will honor that. Um, it just needs to be one of our partner agencies, um, 501c3 Health and Human Service Agency. And we appreciate that. If anyone has any questions on that. So that's the presentation. And I hope that um, you do know how much I appreciate each one of you. And if you have any questions, you can either pop them in the chat or um, just go ahead and ask me. Angela, if you would, let me uh, make a couple of points here. <clears throat> Excuse me. From uh, last year's campaign, if someone is going to submit a uh, form, United Way form, and turn it in to have uh, payroll deductions, uh, payroll will need that person's employee ID number okay. on that form. Uh, that's one of the things that's been requested from payroll. And then the second thing, and I you know, meant to say this earlier, uh, some of you may be new to the United Way campaign within LFUCG, but I want to state or emphasize the fact that this is a no pressure type campaign. Uh, yep. This is not one of those campaigns where we try to force feed people into giving uh, to the United Way. Uh, I mean, and I just say that because uh, prior to coming here, I've been with a company that it was mandatory that everyone gave. Uh, so I just want to make sure that we're clear about that. Those are only two things I have. Yep. Thank you, Arthur. Any, any questions for Angela? I had a question. Can you all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is Renita. Hi. With police. Hi. Um, I had tried to send something in the chat, so I don't know if it came through, but I was just trying to find out, um, as far as the forms, we had in the past gotten actual hard copy forms to fill out, but are we doing it? What are we doing? You will get hard copy forms. I think, well, I think we talked about me sending that out for you all to print for each department. Okay. But I'm happy if you need um, additional forms or if you need me to drop some off, I can do that as well. If you have forms, we're like, we're probably about 700 employees. So if you okay. already have some. You want me to drop those off to you? Yes, I'm at police headquarters. And also, if you have some flyers that you mm -hmm. can drop off that we can um, hang in our areas. Yes, how many would you like? Uh, let me see. Let's see got. Maybe 10. I don't know if they're, are they all the same or would they be different or? Um. I know we have two different sizes, but I think they're the same. I can look at that, though. And if there are different, okay. I can give you a variety. Okay, that'd be great. <laughs> okay, I think that's... Drop, drop the information off to me. I can take them over to Renita. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, hearing none, we'll turn it over to Stacy. Hello, everybody. Um, I see on the agenda that I have like 15 minutes and I'm going to tell you that I'm going to do that. Um, they call it, I think, the Kentucky Derby speech, like two minutes or less. So you'll be happy to know that. Um, the information is not live on the internet. We were waiting until after this meeting for it to go live. So um, we'll let you all know when that's ready to go. Um, and then we'll continue to promote anything that you all have going on. So we'll, if you will send me any type of fundraisers that are open to the public, I think um, in years past, there's been some like division only kind of things, but then other folks have had 
like a chili cook-off that anybody in the government can come to. We'll be happy to promote that. So just send that as well. And then if you need assistance with flyers, you know, if you're like, hey, we're having um, wear jeans to work day or whatever, and you need us to do our office to do a flyer for you, if you will just send us the who, what, where, when, why, and let us know when you need that back by. Um, something other than ASAP would be great because uh, that kind of means something different to everybody. So um, again, thank you. And we're here to help. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask myself or anybody here. Thanks. Uh, Angela, do you have anything else in closing? Um, I'm just one more thing that I will just reiterate that if anyone wants a speaker for their department or to do a kickoff or a presentation or anything like that, um, even Jerry Botts from our Waypoint Center is a great speaker and, and we would love the opportunity to do that for you. So just let me know. And I appreciate it. all your help again. Okay, with that said, well, once again, appreciate everyone being on with us this morning. And as we said in the very beginning, if you have any questions, uh, concerns, or whatever the case may be, please feel free to reach out to either Stacy Diamond or myself. Thank you, and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you, Chris. Yes, thank you. Happy to do it. Thank you all.